Growing up in Spokane, Washington, Scott Hogsett had a great love of sports. He was the guy that I played every sport with when we were even in junior high. I think he was sponsored by Marty Hogan, which is a racquetball company at the time. In high school, uh, sports-wise, he played some football, obviously he played baseball. He excelled in baseball, obviously he was an excellent pitcher, uh, excellent third baseman as well. Scott was a crazy competitive athlete, always has been. He's the type of guy that you would want on your team, not the guy that you want to play against, because he'll find a way to beat you. He was just fiery. I mean, he was that guy that, you know, he wanted to win. The life as Scott Hogsett knew it changed in an instant one night when he was just 19 years old. That's when Scott got pushed off a deck while at a party. The doctor took me into the room and told me the extent of his, the injury and uh, said that he had broke his neck and severed his spinal cord and he'd never be able to walk again. And so that was the beginning to the end, to the end of his life that he knew it then. Going in to uh, see Scott, you know, during his initial uh, ICU visit at Sacred Heart, you know, was, it was, it was awful. I mean, it was, you know, walked in and, you know, seeing him in traction wasn't, wasn't easy for anybody, obviously. Scott was now a quadriplegic. With no leg function and limited movement of his upper arms and body above his mid chest. Scott spent two weeks in the intensive care unit and six months in the hospital rehabilitating. During that time, Hogsett was introduced to the sport of wheelchair rugby. And it was a whole new life for him because he was so used to doing the athletic thing and all of a sudden it came to a sudden halt. He knew he had to have something to do because that's just, that's Scott, that's his nature. Um, and he found it in rugby. Nine months after the incident, Scott was playing competitively. And after trying out for Team USA and being cut on six different occasions, Hogsett made the team heading to the 2004 Paralympic Games in Athens, Greece. From Phoenix, Arizona, Scott Hogsett. During that time, Hogsett was featured in the Academy Award nominated movie Murderball, a documentary about quadriplegic rugby players. I've been out in clubs, I've been out all over the place, and people will come up to me and they'll shake my hand and say, oh, it's good to see you out. And I, like, I look at them and I'm like, good to see me out. You know, like, where am I supposed to be, in a closet, hanging out? This is ours for the taking, boys. This is ours. During his time with Team USA, Scott won two world championships and played in three Paralympic Games, winning bronze medals in 2004 and 2012, and striking gold in 2008. Hogsett also captained the 2012 team in London. That's kind of the most impressive thing, his longevity in the sport. He's been to three Paralympics. He's been on the uh, USA team for 12 years, and so not a lot of guys can say that, so I think that's pretty special. What separates Scott and what made him great was his passion, his intensity. He refused to lose and he really had a great ability to will his teammates to succeed beyond even their capabilities. When you want him to be, when you need him to be, he's the one who you look to for leadership, for direction. On the court, Hogsett has led the Phoenix Heat to three national championships, the most recent coming last month. For me, um, seeing Scott um, be one of the best players in USA history is, I couldn't be more proud. Um, this, this guy's been the top of every sport that he's ever played. It's not surprising. Rugby has been a lifesaver for him, and he's been playing for, what, 20 years? And I, I, it makes me cry. I, it's just cool. It's made a whole new life for him, a wonderful life. I'm just proud of him. Very proud of him. What impresses me most about Scott is that he has an incredible work ethic. He works really hard to achieve all of his dreams and goals. It's very significant with his level of injury how much he's able to do. And wheelchair rugby is just one of them. I mean, I've done parasailing with him. You know, he water skis, 
there's just isn't anything he can't do. You know, hand cycling, I mean, the list is long. Scott had a lot of success at Team USA with gold medals and world championships, so he set the bar high for all those players that follow. But more than that, I think Scott's legacy now and as it continues into the future is teaching uh, both on the court and off the court. Scott does a great job of peer mentoring newly injured and disabled people. When someone first gets injured, when someone first gets hurt, in many cases, they don't dwell on the fact that they're gonna be in a wheelchair. They don't think about the fact that they're never gonna walk again. It's really the fact they don't know where to go from there. They don't know what the rest of their life is gonna be like, which can be so scary um, for most people. Scott's advocacy and his leadership off the court when he goes into the rehabilitation centers, when he does peer mentoring um, to help new injuries, is so big because he gives them the comfort and the, the awareness that everything's gonna be okay. He gives them direction when they don't have any. He can open their eyes to a whole new world. They see a guy who was in their position 10 years before, 15 years before, who now has three Olympic medals, a beautiful family of his own, and has achieved great success in life. And to them, that is very inspiring. I couldn't be more proud of him. Uh, to watch him take what life has given him per se and just kind of the way he's treated life since then, it's, it's unbelievable.